Eh, whatever. I'm already starting on this one. Hello! Do you, do you really need to see my face this big and close up and personal? No, because we're doing GameCube mods today. How you guys doing? Starts about 15 after. We started 13 after. You're a liar, Dad. Okay, you said about. That's fine. Welcome. Hello. Streamlabs is telling me to play Baldur's Gate 3. I'm good, honestly. I didn't play the first two, and I don't really know what the game is about. But anyways, if I can find where I'm trying to go, the poll question is, will you experience Deja Vu today? And if you are subscribed to the, um, the VODs channel, then yes, because today's magically, uh, today's VOD stream upload is the last time we did this exact shell for the GameCube mod. So, yeah. You're, n you're not late. What's new? You're good. I don't animate. Oh, oh, your name is Jake. I, that's weird. I didn't know anyone else was named Jake. That's a really dumb joke. Anyways, welcome. I am going to push this off to the side for just a moment so we can see what we have in stock. If you want me to uh, say your name in the... If you want me to say your name as in saying hello to you like I normally do, then say something in the chat now. Speak now or forever hold your pee. But... We have almost just dropped four macros. That would have been awful. We have one, two, three, four, wait for it, five, six, seven. We'll put this one up here. Seven Game Boy macros. We've got just one SP right now. And then we've got one, two, three Game Boy Pockets, and new as of uh, last night, we've got a pink and white Game Boy Color, and a Typh- no, not Typhlosion, a Cyndaquil Game Boy Color, and of course, the everlasting DMGs of Venusaur, the red and white, and the wood DMGs. If you want any and all of these, literally, you can buy them all. It's fine with me. You can head to the link in the description. It'll take you to the GameCube page, but, you know, just remove that slash GC, or probably slash GameCube. I'm not sure. And uh, it'll take you to where you need to be. But if you do go to the slash GC section, you will find that you can, anybody can now uh, grab a uh, HDMI adapter for the GameCube. Initially, I bought 10 of them for each of the GameCube mods, and then no one's bought one yet. So, <laughs> I was making it so you could only buy it if you were buying a GameCube. No one cared to grab one. So now they're just available for anyone to grab. And I will cut it off if we sell too many but they're really good and a pretty solid price and I'm stacking these way too high all right that is what we have in stock and then we will put this one in stock later and put this off to the side and let's say hello to everybody let's see we've got What's new? Ian rolled. DJ Ames. DC. Jake animates. Pickle Rock. Stefan. My mom and Opal. Uh, and Alexander. There we go. Welcome. Hello. How are you guys doing? I'm gonna get out my LTT screwdriver. And let's get down to business. 15 after 11.58. You got me. You got me there.
You've never opened a GameCube? Well, you're about to see what it looks like. You need the uh, fatter game bit screwdriver, the four and a half millimeter game bit, and I'm about to tighten that. Okay, I guess that one's not coming out. I got the clear purple GameCube and it's awesome. Nice. The one for me or just the shell like this? Because if you got it for me, then thank you. I am realizing now I didn't get the mod kit out, and we should swap this to uh, auto focus or manual focus. That's not the right section. Um, it's really hard to do upside down. There we go. Also, I'm enjoying the Suicune GBA, GBC. Works great. Awesome. I'm glad you're enjoying it, and I'm glad it's working well. Okay. Cool. Take this, and we're going to steal the dust cover from this. And I think that's all we need from that. Thank you, dog. It's great input. I saw that they had custom builds of LTT screwdrivers, LTX. Yeah. I, I would like some cool colors for this. But I'm just upset that I went with the, the black uh, coating. Because it's not good. What are you growling at, dog? My goodness. It's a little warm. I'm getting a little warm today. Nuggets a girl. Oh boy. We're gonna be like this all day, all stream. She's been rowdy this morning. So I apologize in advance for the bark but we don't have a muzzle. Yeah, Pico Boot is the way to go. Initially, I was, uh... Initially, I liked the other one, the Xeno chip, but this is just fine. That way, you don't have to depend on your, uh your disk drive once you have backed up all your games legally of course I am not going to get the uh, the stubby screwdriver. I just, what I want is them to make a, a screwdriver handle like this. Something thin that is more for the, the smaller bits. But... What? 
hey, come here. Like it. You're not even going to listen to me because you know that you shouldn't be barking. <sighs> Dogs. I am going to go turn on the AC though, so I'll be right back. That shut louder than I was expecting it to. Hopefully the uh, AC kicking on will uh, be enough noise for her to not hear whatever she's hearing. What mods am I adding? We are changing the shell and we are doing Pico Boot. And we're also going to swap out the thermal pads and all that stuff. Putting a recharge or a rechargeable, a, an easier swappable battery in as well. that's getting in my way and we can swap over the iFixit bit because there's one thing that the LTT screwdriver nor the stubby will be able to do and that is get in here well this screw is fine but this they're too fat to reach into Gently, ooh, this is really tough. Welcome, Gleason. I'm gonna carefully wiggle this back and forth because we don't want to just pull straight up because that could damage the chips because there's a good, a good amount of uh, suction here. My goodness. There we go. And voila. Put that off to the side for now. We'll mess with it later. We're gonna keep going though. Maybe. There we go. That is the GameCube right there. If you haven't seen that before. It's really all you need, I mean, you need the power supply down here, but.
What are your favorite games from the GameCube? Super Mario Strikers. Super Monkey Ball, one and two are pretty good. I like one a little bit more, but I like the that the second one has a campaign to it, like a story mode. Um, let's see. Mario Kart Double Dash is always a classic, but I I like Mario Kart Wii more. Mario Kart Wii is my favorite. And there's definitely more games. I'm just drawing blanks. Uh, I know it's kind of an arcade game and Dreamcast game, but I love Crazy Taxi. Uh, I have not played the, <laughs> the GameCube versions, but I'm addicted to Pikmin 1. I've only recently played the Pikmin games. I still need to finish Pikmin 4. I have not had the chance, though. But Pikmin 1, Pikmin 2 is pretty good, too. But I think Pikmin 1 is my favorite of the Pikmin. I don't know, but there's still, oh, Sunshine's pretty good too, but I have not, I've never beat Sunshine before. <laughs> oh, uh, Animal Crossing, the original Animal Crossing is the best. How could I forget? And I actually paid off my debt in that game, which is not an easy feat. That is a very dusty bottom. Jam our screwdriver in here and push out these feet. It's going to be nearly impossible for you guys to see because it's black rubber feet in a black shell with a ton of shadows. <laughs> so, just pushing those out because. The new shells do not come with really anything. It's just the plastic, pretty much. I am very thankful that the top halves are put together. That would be annoying to do every time. But there's that. Fully, well, almost fully disassembled. don't need this because well, we need this but this is for the 101 mods or models we do not have a 101 model today and these are for the memory card slots which we'll do a little bit later for now we're gonna put all of this back in We're gonna put this off to the side because we don't need that yet. So like this, yeah. Oh wait, hold up. Let's not be dumb. Let's not be dumb. Was it that one, or was it? I think it was the other way. Yeah, by it being stuck in there, I'm gonna say it's this way. No, I was correct. Never mind. It just fit really well. And then one more. Okay. I forgot those one time, and I never want to forget them again. So you have to fully disassemble that. No, thank you. Where do I find some high capacity 
memory cards for my PlayStation 2. Uh, I'm not really a PS2 person, but I'm pretty sure like all of the aftermarket ones nowadays are pretty high capacity. And I'm, I think they're also either currently working on or already have the, uh, the SD card adapter one that works as an actual memory card. I think it's called the MemCard Plus. Should I mod a second-hand GameCube? I mean, you can't really get them first-hand anymore. If you think you can uh, handle it, then yeah. It's a good mod. get too deep in here. Guess doesn't really matter, we can put that in last, but let's see, I think oh no, we need to put this piece down which goes in like this. He says with a lot of confidence. It's like this. Yep, that's how you do it. Okay, because we can swap over this. I feel like I haven't really read chat much. Are there any custom cases similar to the one you're installing for PS2? I believe there are for the slim, but not the fat model PS2. Is there a cheaper alternative to the Retro Tink? I mean, if you want 5X Pro, not really. I mean, I think you could make your own uh, OS, OSSC? I don't know what it is really. I think it's pretty much just what the retro tink is, but more uh, open source, customizable kind of thing. But it's more for like tinkers and stuff. I could be totally wrong on that. I don't know. It retro tink is like pretty plug and play, but if you want to tinker with it, you definitely can. Uh, but if you want something that's gonna be as like high quality, then I think that three hundred dollars or three three seventy five three fifty. I feel like that's a pretty a pretty good price for what it does. Because if you think about having to put your uh, like an HDMI mod in every single console, if you are like me and have them all, that's gonna add up so quick that's like this thing is the price of two HDMI mods and I can plug in every console that I have into it whether it be via SCART or RGB component whatever it can do them all okay let's do the soldering actually I want to swap these out real quick not something that you guys will re really be able to see but okay. 
Welcome, Joel. Just bought the stuff for Pico Boot. Nice. I'm gonna have to grab the stuff for Pico Boot in a second here. Because I didn't set that out for myself last night. So, for the Wii U, well, you're not going to really get much out of the Wii U. Just because that's already an HD console. And Retro Tink only. The 5X Pro until the 4K releases, which is hopefully by the end of the year. Uh, the 5X Pro only goes up to 1440p, so taking the. Wii U from 1080, 1080 to 1440 is really not worth it. But there's no HDMI port on the 5X Pro. And I don't know if that has component in it at all. I feel like it, it's one of those things like why wouldn't there be, but I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't think it's really worth it for the Wii U, but anything that can do component, RGB, SCART, stuff like that, it'll work in there. I use it for PlayStation 2, PlayStation 1, Dreamcast, original Xbox. Uh, I do like the... I do like this for my GameCube, the uh, the Kaiko HDMI adapter. Uh, that does pretty well. And it's gonna be the exact same output as though you did the HDMI mod in this. So I go with that and just plug it into HDMI. And then I have the HDMI mod in my N64, but uh, honestly just doing the RGB mod on the N64 uh, is worth it if you get the retro tank. It's gonna look pretty much the same. There's the kit. I should probably plug in the soldering iron cord. Hey, Mikey. But if you want, like, just a solid upscaler, Retro Tink has the 2X, but it's really just a line doubler, which isn't that crazy, but it's still pretty cool. I don't, I think it's worth it to just get the 5X Pro, but I'd also wait to see what the, uh, the 4K what the price of that is and what's all included in that. So, yeah. I'm hoping that one of those gets sent to me, but probably not going to happen. <laughs> okay. I am going to get all of this awesome stuff out. And we're going to do some soldering. We're actually going to move this out of the way for now because we're going to start with soldering on top of the Pico board. It's in, in here. There we go. And I'm actually, before I forget, I'm going to slide this into the GameCube with the SD card that I prepared last night. I don't know why I haven't just already prepared all of the SD cards, but you will get an SD card included with your purchase. 
it will just not come with any games on it. I will delete all the games from it once, uh, well, right before I ship it out. So they're for testing purposes because they're mine. They're my ROMs, not yours. And I'm not trying to get sued by Nintendo. All right. I'm going to pull up the diagram, too, because I do not remember what goes where. Where is it? Hi, Mr. Skittler. I will always think you are my seventh grade teacher every time I see your name. <laughs> Carl, how do you like the quality of this clear case? It's pretty good. Uh, the. What was I going to say? One of them I scratched the, uh, the top piece on pretty easily. The, the jewel the part that says GameCube but other than that it's pretty it's actually really high quality I enjoy it especially because a lot of these GameCubes come pretty beat up so alright let's zoom in as much as we can and fo focus Push this forward. There we go. Doesn't seem like it's quite. There we go. And we are going to solder all these points. We're going to solder to GP4, 5, 6, and 7. Let's add solder to those two points, those two points, trying to get those to bridge, there we go, but it doesn't matter because we're going to stick a wire in there in a second, and then we are going to go to the 3 volt, the 3v3, the 3 volt line. There we go. And we'll do ground over here as well, why not? You can kind of choose any ground you want. They tell you in the diagram and on the diagram in my uh, video to put the ground down here. It does not matter. And if you're gonna be using this thing to uh, hold the Pico board, then you don't want to put it down low at all because then it won't fit. So. I need to grab my tweezers and let's get started with the green wire. The nice thing about watching my video tutorial is I uh, changed the colors on the diagram to uh, match the wires that are included with this kit. So you don't have to be confused. And then yellow, this yellow feller, it's going to bridge across six and seven. That looks awful but it's bridging with itself and that's all that matters. Then we can take our five volt, or three volt, sorry. Lay it across there, let me do it a little better here. There 
and we're good. I'm also going to do that just a little bit, make sure they're all pointing the same direction, and I'm going to unplug my soldering iron. That is that. We can put our heat shrink down here and move out the way. Focus. Nope, the other way. Cool. In focus enough. I'm not good at manual focus. Have you gotten anything in your P.O. box lately? Should I be scared, Mikey? <laughs> I have not gotten anything. I, I checked on Saturday. It's been a while. Actually, there is... Uh, a little thing that I got sent to my P.O. box that I have been meaning to make a short on, but I just haven't had the... Well, I've... Yeah, yeah, I haven't had the time. Even for shorts. I mean, I haven't posted a short in a while. I still have a few that are just ready to go. I just haven't posted them. But... I'm gonna add Flux to... Let's... Swap over to this. There we go the third pin up top and the second pin down here then these two pins and then is it it's this pin here and this pin here okay and Well, yeah, I'm not going to get rid of it. Uh, there is a company that's supposed to be sending me another um, another handheld emulator, and I'm excited about that, but nothing too crazy. Okay, I definitely need to trim these. Welcome, Pierce? Pierce? Probably Pierce. Welcome. Okay. I'm so zoomed in that you don't, you don't get to see what I'm doing, but making the wire just a little bit shorter So I can, oh, that's not going to stick. That's not sticking either. There we go. And we're probably going to have to do the same thing to green. They just make these wires stick out a little too long. For the inside of the GameCube. There we go. It's the third one, right? Yeah, okay. Phew! Next, we can keep these ones a little bit long. That is fine. Just gotta make sure we're not bridging anything. And twist these a little bit, so hopefully they don't fray. But they're not twisting very well, so. 
It's all right. I think I'm going to try adding a little bit of solder. I forgot that these... This old solder is a little temperamental. That's not what I wanted. We're gonna turn the soldering iron up to 350C. So we can actually get the uh, solder flowing better down in this area. Thank you, light pipe. All right, we're at 350. And I don't know if I said this, I feel like I did, but we're supposed to bridge these two points with the black wire. But none of the other ones need to be bridged. And then we should be able to connect this purple one down here. I don't know why the dog is going off again. I'm gonna shorten this one because it's tight. And that is good enough. I think, yeah. Cool. And that should be good. I'm gonna add just a little bit. I knew that was gonna desolder. clean my irons tip here and set it down Whew. I have issues with my with some old stuff it is very dark shiny melts flows easier I think when solder gets old it builds up a bit of oxidization yes it does And, uh, yeah, old solder just, uh, just a little bit harder to, uh, get flowing. But a little extra heat usually does the trick for me. Get out a paper towel.
clean up the flipper. If you didn't know, that's what the, uh, is that, that's the graphics card, I think. Yeah, and then that's the CPU. Yeah. The flipper, because the code name was Dolphin, that's why the emulator is called Dolphin. That's why there's a Team Dolphin in the Mario Party 7. I can't seem to cut. Come on. I know flush cutters aren't the best for cutting a cat on tape, but they're flush cutters, man. I guess we don't want to cover the screw hole. Put that down there just because we don't want to accidentally uh, have those wires short on this hunk of metal, which we are going to clean off now. I'm actually going to move this up right now and slide all of this over for now and we're going to clean this up These ones are coming up pretty easily. Yeah, using the pick is a lot nicer than scraping it with your fingernail. Okay, and do the same thing here, clean all this up, all cleaned up. I should clean up my fingers since they've got that thermal paste on there. And we can apply the new pads. Should probably update you guys on next week's video it is coming along well ish so if you don't follow me on twitter i'm gonna catch you up with what i've complained about this weekend uh so most of my editing time i'd say about 90 percent of my editing time is just cutting out the dead space in my my mistakes on my lines because a lot of my content is scripted not all of it though 
pretty much if you see me uh, on the angle of my setup and not like sitting at the table doing something with the nice bokeh in the background that's uh, that's scripted me but if I'm sitting at the table and the camera's straight on that's unscripted but um, what was I gonna say the this next video the comparison of all the IPS kits is heavily scripted <laughs> it's all script there's only like a few times where while I'm recording I ad-lib a little bit but it's also a really long script for me so it's gonna be a longer video which means a longer edit and I was just I didn't know for sure hold on there we go I didn't know for sure if I was going to be able to finish the video in time and I think I will now but I'm still having some issues with editing I found I learned about autopod which I had heard of autopod before but I figured oh that's just for for podcasts you know that's an AI tool for podcasts which is insane if you haven't seen anything on autopod you should look up a video um, it will automatically edit your podcast for you like you really don't need to touch anything and I was like man I really wish that we could do that for scripted content for me well they also have auto jump cut that is made with the same tool it's literally all in all within autopod so I gave it a shot and yeah it cut down my hour and 45 minutes of recording yes that's how long it took me to record the script <laughs> and it cut it down to an hour and eight minutes removing all of the dead space and now I'm just going through removing all of my outtakes but even that is really hard right now <laughs> because uh, my computer just hasn't been running very fast lately and with all the cuts that the autopod thing made it has made it even worse and it's really 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 frustrating and I don't know what to do about it it's like borderline unusable when I'm editing gaming's still fine but I don't really game on my PC but now I'm like okay do I upgrade my PC is there something I'm doing wrong is autopod just too much for my computer like I'm I'm at a loss I don't really know what to do and, what, and I'd like to know what I know what to do but yeah that's where I'm at I've got I feel like a third probably more like a quarter of the video edited um, hold on I need to stick the this wire in a little bit more there and yeah I don't know do I upgrade my computer do I need to mess with some settings I also learned that just because you buy a certain speed of RAM doesn't mean it actually runs at that I've had 3200 megahertz RAM for the entire time I've had a PC and uh, it runs at 2133 and I'm like ah I wonder if that's the problem and I learned that technically anything over the stock is overclocking it even though it's rated at 3200 megahertz that if you run it at that that's overclocking and uh, my motherboard won't let me overclock to 3200 megahertz because I don't know why 
It won't let me adjust the voltage for the DRAM, which is really annoying. And I don't know if my motherboard's just dumb or if it. I don't know. Dang it, I just realized I need to put one more screw down there. But yeah, it's really frustrating. Uh, yeah, so I did do that. I went to my BIOS and the DOCP or whatever it is for AMD's XMP is is on or was on. I turned it off because it only has one profile for 3200 megahertz, but my computer won't do that. It doesn't boot and I can't adjust it at all. But that's the only thing I can do. All I was able to get it to do, because I can't adjust the voltage, was uh, I got it to go to uh, t just the one step up, which I think is 2400 megahertz. And it's like not noticeable. <laughs> like I don't, I don't think it really did anything. But I feel like having faster RAM would do the trick, especially because I'm on AMD. But now, I think it should be illegal to advertise your RAM as a certain speed when you can't actually do that unless you overclock it, which is uh, voiding the warranty. So, yeah, a little, little frustrating over in PC land, and I am starting to think wow maybe I should just get a Mac because I don't really game on my PC anymore anyways and I can still keep my PC because if I ever do want to game on it it's there and I could stream from my PC and do a lot more with that here which would be nice but at the same time the the Mac mini only goes up to 32 gigabytes of RAM so it's like okay do I upgrade to the studio but then that's like four grand. I don't want to spend four grand on a PC or on a Mac, on a computer in general, just so I can do my job. So yeah. I have not updated my BIOS. But I have a feeling, I mean, I, I'll probably try updating my BIOS, but I have a feeling that my motherboard is just going to be like, nah, we're not going to let you change the voltage, because that's what it needs. It needs to be at a higher voltage, and the one profile that it lets me change to, because manual doesn't let me change the voltage still, it's grayed out, the only way I can change the voltage is if I do the one profile and it's only at one 1.35 volts I also don't know anything about timing <laughs> uh, but I know that 3200 megahertz needs more than 1.35 volts so Now I understand why people just get max. Plus, Adobe is like better optimized for Mac, so it's really just something I gotta consider.
anyone else's arms getting tired? Any little forearm burn going? No, just me. <sighs> nope, still the wrong way. If it's AMD, XMP won't overclock. I've never heard of JEDEC, -E but mine's got. <laughs> I almost said COPD. <laughs> but that's it's something like that. DOCP? That's what my motherboard says. That's what the internet said, too. I guess you guys are the internet technically, but DDR4. My uh, machine is, I guess, old by today's standards. I built it in 2018. It's a Ryzen 7 2700X. I've got Corsair Vengeance RGB Pro. And uh, I've got, I don't know what motherboard I have. I know it's Asus. And it's not, it's probably the most frustrating part of my build because I don't even have a USB 3.0 header for my, uh, for my case. <laughs> Or I don't. I have a USB 3.0. I have. I don't have a USB C header on my motherboard. So the USB C on my case does nothing, which is awesome. Okay. One more piece of soldering that we have to do before we are done here is this. Oh, I need a drink after that ranting. I'll repeat my, my specs real quick. I've got DDR4, 3200 megahertz, supposedly, RAM from Corsair, the Vengeance RGB Pro. I've got four DIMMs for 32 gigs total. Yep. Four by eight. And then I've got, I don't know other than it's an ROG board <laughs> that doesn't have a USB-C header from about 2018. And then I've got a uh, Ryzen 7 2700X is my CPU. And I've got, uh, I mean, it doesn't really matter, but I've got an RTX 2070 Super my GPU that doesn't really matter in this situation Positive tab. I'm gonna stick that in there. Okay. I'm gonna put 
put the hot soldering iron down. <laughs> yeah, it would be so nice to have a working USB-C header. this came out but we're gonna bend it a little bit oh there we go okay so now should hopefully oh gosh darn it We'll start with the the negative. My goodness. Okay, this pin, my positive pin is bent. I wish I could do it from the back side, but can I? This doesn't go in, I'm going to try it from the back. Gotta solder it down to secure it. <laughs> Bet he's a little sore thing from climbing in and out of the playhouse. Yep, that'll do it. We had uh, we had my niece over for a sleepover for the first time, and my dad kept come uh, climbing in and out of the playhouse that they got her. I was inside editing. One time I'll ever said say that I'm thankful that I was editing. Which I do I really do enjoy editing. I just don't enjoy the boring part of cutting out all of my mistakes and stuff. That is not fun. What's fun is doing all the cool editing tricks. Okay. Pokemon Go. Celebrate the 2023 Pokemon World Championships in Pokemon Go. Hmm. Alexander, if you're still in here. <laughs> Thanks. I like how you said earlier you've been enjoying it, and uh, there's your notification, or my notification, that you bought it. Okay. Uh... This piece. So like, yeah. What's the battery for? Yeah, the the clock. By the way, for example, in Animal Crossing. That battery is how it knows that it's still at least close to 
the right date and time after 20 years of uh, not playing that save file. And while a lot of the GameCube ones are still fine, uh, at least in my experience, they've all been fine. Uh, it's just a little thing that's going to be nice for people in the future. For whoever buys this. When we list it in just a few moments. Last time it sold instantly. Will it sell instantly again today? The world may never know. Actually, we will know. But it'll be pretty easy for us to know. Okay. Slap this in here. How's the, the back of my head? I cannot get this. There we go. <laughs> that took way too long. Alright. I'm actually going to get a little bit of the dust out of there. This is already pretty... Yeah, there's no dust in here. Cool. And let's get the top going. Shall we? Oh, yeah. Let's slide this in before I forget. Don't forget your dust cover. Slides in and then locks in with the tabs. Always put the top down with the lid open or else you could break that sensor that I just dusted off that is the closed lid sensor if you have the lid closed you will break it that's another short that I need to edit because I <laughs> just it was so dumb so dumb and I don't know how I don't even remember what I was doing but I like slammed the GameCube top down just to like the sound effect and it was gonna be a cool transition and I just destroyed that piece. But anyways. Alright. J Prevost. Prevost. Welcome. You can actually see the you can actually see the screw going in. It's a little cloudy, but you can see the screw going in. Tighten that, but then we're going to loosen it about a full turn and maybe tighten it a little bit more. Um, I was loosening it. Okay, tighten it all the way here. That's probably good because we don't want these wires to be too pinched. So 
Actually, you know what? Now that I think about it, I don't think it matters if we tighten this one down all the way or not. I'm going to leave it because... Nah, it's kind of noticeable. Okay, we'll tighten it. If it doesn't work, we'll loosen it. Okay. Cool. Let's put the crown jewel on. Yeah, tighten until you hear the uh, the screw post crack. Don't do that. Don't actually. That's a really bad idea. Unless you want to break a screw post, then that's a good idea. But I don't know why you'd want to do that. M mimic. M mimic. Yeah, that's spelt wrong, but yeah. Welcome. <laughs> I don't know why I had a hard time pronouncing that. Now watch, I still pronounced it wrong, probably. But you can correct me in five minutes. Okay. Can peel that. And we can... Put that down. All righty then. Let's do the classic take like three minutes to set up the GameCube. The SD card is already inserted, so it should just boot up. Plug that in. Pretty much the only thing not included with this is controller nor games. But SD card, the adapter, obviously the cube and the mods within it. You get a third party power supply that I just plugged in. And if you want, you can grab an additional HDMI adapter that upscales the image and it looks very beautiful if you're working on, or if you're going to be plugging this into an HD TV. I highly recommend it. We're going to plug that in there. And just see so it's a little limp. But where did I put the there it is. game is on the ground. Just so you guys see it, I am Plugging in this Super Monkey Ball disc. And I'm gonna unplug, you can see my face for a second. Hi, how are you guys doing? I'm gonna unplug that. I'm gonna plug in my HDMI cable. I'm gonna swap over the games tab. And we're gonna hit power. And we're in. Thank you, dog. We can go down to the games tab. You have to use the D-pad. I don't know why I'm showing you the entire controller. You need to use the D-pad if you want to navigate this menu. And I've got Crazy Taxi and Mario Kart Double Dash up in here. But we're going to hit the eject button by going to B and then I'll go to that bottom menu down there hit the eject button with A and we can go through these three options I have no idea what this does but that's the chip that we soldered to earlier this is the SD card so you click here to go back to this menu or you go over to DVD 
and it's going to spin up the disk. It says resetting, and it's not resetting anything, and boom! Super Monkey Ball. If we want to go in there, we can boot up our Super Monkey Ball. This is a Japanese GameCube, so if you're wanting to play your games, you have to do it this way, off of a disk. If you're wanting to play your GameCube games off of discs, uh, you'll have to boot in that way, but you can't not boot in that way. I guess if you take the SD card out of the bottom, then it'll just load up like a normal GameCube, but it'll be in Japanese, so you have to do it this way. Don't remove that SD card unless you are adding games to it. And we're in Super Monkey Ball. It is that simple. Guess we're Gong Gong. I didn't want to be Gong Gong. I like Baby. Baby's my favorite. But it is that easy. And it runs just as fast as any other GameCube game would. Now, the only thing here, and this is only for me, but there is a bit of delay for me because I have a really bad capture card. But. I'm just so good at Super Monkey Ball that it doesn't matter. Yeah. Let's uh, power this off. If you hit reset, it's just going to reset into the game. So you have to fully shut off to get back to the Swiss menu. Is the GC startup animation available? Uh, did it not play when we booted into it? I thought that... Oh, you want the SD card. I swear it does it. Maybe I'm just crazy. We'll do Mario Kart. We'll load Mario Kart this time. No, it does just skip it. What? You're not even barking at anything. You're just barking. I don't know if you want progressive scan. I don't think you do. I feel like that's a CRT thing. Not for Monkey Ball. Yeah, I guess there is no boot animation. I feel like that's a part of... Um, I feel like it's a part of the... Uh, Oh, what's it called? The only one player. I'm just totally blanking <laughs> on the word that I'm trying the the BIOS. I feel like it's a part of the BIOS which I don't know if you can do anything with that. Progressive scan is good for flat screens. Oh, okay. Well, I did not know. D-pad does not work in this game. I keep trying to use the D-pad. The BIOS, so like, uh, like on a motherboard, on a PC. Oh. The super high-tech looking screen that you probably have never booted into. I just realized that there is no... I haven't played Double Dash in a long time. This is time trials, so there's not going to be any prize packs, so it really doesn't matter which character I chose. I think Pico Boot's better. Xeno Chip, if you're just like... I don't know. Xeno Chip just doesn't... Like, you're dependent on your disk drive for Xeno Chip. So, I like this one more. Yeah, you have to go through the step of uh, going through the menu to play a disc game, so it's a little starter, or a little, starter, a little slower uh, start to to start the game. I cannot, I cannot talk and play at the same time. It's a little slower going from 
uh, hitting the power button to actually playing the game, but you don't have to rely on your disk drive for all games. Or even just booting into Swiss. Because if your disk drive fails, then you can't even boot into Swiss. You play games off SD card. So. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah, the the delay in the chat definitely uh definitely harms conversation. <laughs> there might be a way to just like add the BIOS file into uh Swiss, but I'm not sure. I really don't know. I know if you take the SD card out, actually it won't do anything. It won't do the boot up because I don't have a Japanese game. Oh well, it just won't play the game. It just does that. But we put this back in. wires in the way and we should be back into Swiss boom easy as that you can still access both the memory card slots all that and I get you started with a 32 gigabyte SD card micro SD you'll get a paper in the uh, the box that has a QR code that'll lead you to my video on how to back up your games, but in the short of it, you go to the apps, you go to Clean Rip, and you follow the instructions, download your game. It takes about 30 minutes a game, depending on the size, but usually about 30 minutes, no matter what game. And that's that. So, if you are wanting this GameCube right here, this guy right here, I am going to turn it off take out my super monkey ball, unplug my controller because I don't want anybody thinking you're getting my controllers, and I'm going to list it right now. So if you are wanting this guy, I'm going to put it up for sale now, and uh, link in the description. If you want the, uh, what's it called? The uh, HDMI adapter, the Kaiko Upscaler, you can add that to cart right now. Even if you're not going to buy this, you can buy one for me. It's in the GameCube section. And I have to delete all of these pictures for that. One moment, getting the getting everything ready. And plus one to that. Take it out of the draft and up to active status. And it should be officially live. Now, if you want it, you can grab it. Link in the chat. Thank you, DC. I almost called you Rux. Speaking of Rux, I have not seen that man in a long time. Hope he's doing all right. Yeah. Yes, it does region unlock the drive, but you can still play games from any region on uh, on this too. I can go grab. But we, I just proved that <laughs> we played Monkey Ball. This is a Japanese GameCube and uh, played an American game. I've got Japanese games that we could play on there too. I don't have any Euro games, but yeah. It just doesn't unlock the drive without going into uh, Swiss first. So that's the only difference. 
I'm definitely never forgetting that. Okay, DC. Alright. Well, that's really it for me. Almost 2 o'clock, 1.45-ish. And, uh, yeah. Thank you all for coming out. Um, yeah, I feel like I was going to say something else. I'm not going to get all those Game Boys out again because this mat is kind of dirty from the uh, thermal pads. Not paste. They're not paste. They're pads. Uh, yeah, I am hoping to get that uh, IPS comparison video out by Friday. I've got some other cool videos on the way. Uh, I've got an idea for a cool video soon that I would like to do and if you want to be a part of it keep an eye out on my social medias follow me on uh, Instagram we're almost a 5k on Instagram uh, Twitter slash X I guess and I'll probably make a post in the community tab if you don't want to follow me on those other places but you're more than welcome to follow me anywhere so yeah but it is uh, definitely going to be a, uh, a community video that I have an idea for. I don't want to say too much because I don't want someone else to steal it. But anyways, that is it for me. So I will see you guys in the next one. Later, guys. Oh, man. I feel like that was a long one.